So what happens is you see a dead man walking and he's walking to the execution chamber. And as he's walking to the execution chamber, the other prisoners get a dead man walking. Someone who's got the death penalty put on and say, dead man walking. You got dead man walking. And we're gonna talk about that today. Why? Because there are some of us here that are dead man walking. Amen. And I know a lot of us want to look at that in the negative, amen. And it could be, amen. But we're going to hit a few scriptures, amen. So let us turn to our first scripture. It is our Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And as you turn in your pages or something, you've got your digital electronic devices out. Dead man walking. Another thing is about is someone who is soon to die. You know, dead man walking. Someone who's about to face an unavoidable loss. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. On Sunday we talked about the light. So dead man walking. Dead man walking. The reason I keep repeating that, I want you to Get that in your head, why? So that way when you're in the grocery store, when you're walking around in your house, when you're at school, whether it's high school, college, elementary school, I want you to learn how not to take people for granted. Uh, a lot of times we that are saved, we have a tendency to get on our high horse. and We have a tendency to ridicule people who don't live like you live. We have a tendency we have a tendency to uh, prejudge them. We have a tendency uh, to isolate them. Amen. But what I want you to get an understanding is dead man walking. Dead man walking. That means that this person, anybody you run into, it could be their last step. Why? Because they could be living in such a lifestyle that they could be dead man walking, walking into their death sentence. Now, how do we play a part in that? You are the attorney that could get them free. Mm. You are the attorney that can talk to the governor that could get them a part of their execution. I know that a lot of times we don't think about it that way, but if God saved your soul, if God filled you with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost, then you have access to reach someone who is a dead man walking. Amen. Amen. And that is the value of your life. As a pastor, I would love for you to invite them and have them all come to the church. But don't let that be your first priority. Your first priority is to try to get them off of the death penalty. Now, Jesus Christ died and saved our souls. Jesus Christ died, so that's what gave us access to eternal life. His death, burial, and resurrection gave us access. But we are the attorneys that is to plead the case of the dead man walking. Amen. When you have turned into your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it reads as such. For the wages of sin... Is what? Death. 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 But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Amen. I think this battery might be shot. All right, it doesn't matter. For the wages of sin is death, but what? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the thing that you got to understand is this, that people who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is working for death. Anytime you go to a job, anytime you go on a hire, what do they pay you? Something that is called wages. If you ever want to see somebody get mad, if you ever want to see a Christian act unchristian like, let them get their paycheck, and their paycheck is below what they think they're supposed to get. That's right. All the Jesus in them will not help them, save them, <laughs> keep them. You will see the other side of right. them. 
Why? Because people want what they work for. Exactly. And so yeah. when we're talking about dead man walking, there are people out there on this earth, knowingly and unknowingly, is doing the wages of sin. The wages of sin. Now, sin is something that we as Christians have become so hypocritical on. You know how we become hypocrites on that? Because we love to tell people what they're doing. I'm not smoking. I'm not drinking. I'm not fornicating. I'm not partying. I'm not. I drive the speed limit. We don't say that. Oh, y'all don't say that? Oh, man. I say what I do. <laughs> hey, well, hey, man, we got a few that, uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. They admit it. But you know how that works. Yep. And you know, some of the biggest culprits is up here at the pulpit. Mm -hmm. You know, we love to talk about what people are doing wrong, but I'm not going to tell you that, uh, uh, we should embrace other people's sin. What I'm saying to you is that we are the attorneys that can get their stuff apart. You want to know why? Because Jesus told us to go out into the highways mm -hmm. and into the byways mm -hmm. and what? Compel, Compel them, them to come, to come in. in. Yes. So everybody you meet could be a dead man walking. Right. Everybody you meet, because no matter how, you know, you don't met people that say, well, you know, I know I know Christ. I, I've been saved my whole life. Come on now, Pastor. I might not do some things that I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. but I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I'm going to say to you. I don't care if you saved or not. Everyone is a potential dead man walking. Amen. Because mm -hmm. whether you are saved or not, Whether you're saved or not, you still got that potential to sin. Because even the Bible tells us when you see your brother overtaken and a fault. Remember, he said that to the church. Mm -hmm. When you see your brother overtaken and a fault. We don't even need that much. I need it. Amen. The Bible says when you see your brother overtaken and a fault. That we're supposed to do what we're supposed to go to him right. uh -huh. and restore him uh -huh. in meekness and in love. Uh -huh. Saints, I'm here to tell you right now, dead man walking. Uh -huh. If you don't have a love for people, uh -huh. if you don't have a love for a person and when they're doing wrong, then you could never be an effective child of God. Amen. What do people say about you? We as saints have a tendency to... If someone says, this brother, this sister is a mean person, versus us accepting that, you know what we say? They don't like me anyway. We justify our behavior. And it's a shame. Because the Bible does not put any criteria on this. What he said was, for the wages of sin is death. It doesn't matter if you're saved, unsaved, halfway saved. Baptist, Methodist, <laughs> Episcopalian, <laughs> Pentecostal, Apostolic, Church of God in Christ. Wait, it doesn't even matter. Sin is sin. There you go. Mm -hmm. go For the wages of sin, what does that mean? That means at the right moment, at the right time, any one of us have the ability to act up. That's right. Catch me on the wrong day. <laughs> Catch me when me and my wife just had an argument, my kids just made an F, and I crashed my car. You allow her to get something from me. Catch a woman at that time of the month. Catch her with a headache. Catch her when she's mad at her husband. Catch her at any given time. You allow her to catch something. But we want to put so much reservation in our salvation. But I'm not telling you to put reservations in your salvation. What God wants you to do is to understand that you potentially could be a dead man walking. Well, Pastor, what about that guy that's on the airplane? And right before he crashed, he said, Lord, save me. Is he saved? And here's what Pastor going to tell you. I don't know. I don't even know if you saved. I'm just going by what you say. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I, listen, don't get me caught up in that. I'm not going to lie on you. 
That's why I don't preach. I've only preached one funeral my whole life. And even that one, I wasn't intended to preach. It just came out that way. Yeah, see, we have a tendency to want to lie for folks. Oh, I know this mother is making it in there. You don't know what she's doing back home. Yeah, I don't know what y'all are doing when y'all leave here. I would like to pray that you all are living a good life. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not the judge. I am not the judge. You are not the judge over someone else's life. Because the Bible says that the devil knows how to entertain ministers of light or emulate ministers of light. If I was to put it in layman's term, he can be a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's right. You got some of the biggest devils sitting right here in church. Come on now, Pastor. Come on. Oh, I've been saved 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. None of that really matters. I don't know if you truly say. Yes, the Bible says that you can tell the tree by the fruit that is bad. That's right. But even Jesus cursed the fig tree because it stopped bearing fruit. So just because you bear fruit today don't mean you're going to bear fruit tomorrow. That's why you're not going to get me on that once save, always save. Right. Yeah. You ain't going to get me to believe that. Me because you can stop bearing fruit. Right. Then the old adage would be, well, that means you wasn't saved from the beginning. Based on what? Right. Understand something. God already laid out the criteria for salvation. We are not the judge. We are the attorneys. Our job is to help people. Dead man walking. Meaning that there is someone that has gotten the death penalty because of the sins that they've committed. It is our job to be their advocate. It is our job to help people. It is our job to love people. Amen. So the first point that if you get out of this Bible class is this. Salvation is a privilege, not a right. Salvation is a privilege, not a right. Understand that. I know the scripture says what? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. A gift. A gift is not mandatory. A gift. Is circumstantial. Amen. And the more and more we understand that, the more and more we understand that salvation is not a right, it's a privilege, we'll take it more serious. Some of us take our salvation for granted. We think because we preach, we teach. We think because we have led X amount of people to the Holy Ghost. Because we done led X amount of people to salvation. Because we've helped this many people. We think we got a ticket in heaven. But the Bible says in the book of Matthew. Lord, Lord, then we cast out devils in your name. Lord, Lord, then we heal in your name. And you know what he said? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. So we can never get caught up in the good things that we do. Every day we should go through the throne of grace and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent for my sin. Even if you don't think you've committed sin, you need to repent for something. Yes. Yes, Lord. Just cover it off. Yes, Lord. Just cover. Thank you. Because if the day you take your salvation, the day you take your soul for granted, is the day you start backsliding. Because your soul does not belong to you. And you are not the judge. Saints, we are not the judge. We are not the judge. And so much racism and prejudices and sexisms and, and all other kind of isms come simply because we think we are the judge. Amen. Somebody walk in here, tattoo from their head to their toe. Matter of fact, we saw it on... Um, God's not dead too. Mm -hmm. They had this girl, she was tattooed from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Had colored hair, had nose rings and lip rings and all this other kind of weird stuff. And the thing that they thought about it, they said, we want her. Cause the, the real man of God got sick. He got sick, he wasn't on the jury. And so they was happy like, yes, 
Yes. And so she was an alternate, and they picked her to be an alternate. And when they saw the way she looked, they said, yeah, we want her. Because they assumed how she was. And at the end, you found out she was a Christian. And the problem we have as Christians is we want everybody to be Christians like we are Christians. And that's not the case. That is not the case. Every, all of us aren't going to look the same. All of us are not going to dress the same. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some standards. Hold up. It ain't just a free for all. <laughs> there are some standards. <laughs> but but at the same time, those standards aren't religious dogmas. That's right. And there's a difference between the two. If I say everybody in the church, you can only brothers, you can only come to church in a, a, a white button down or a blue button down or a brown button down, then that's religious dogma. Yeah, that's religious dog, but there's nothing that says that. But at the same time, as pastor, I got to be uh, monitoring some things. If I know a guy is 6'2", ripped, 225 pounds, got 2% body fat, there's no way I can have him walking up here with a size too small, too small t-shirt. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> See, you already got your mind going. Why Can't wait my mother-in-law come back. You have a friend. <laughs> yeah, we, we, so that's what I mean by standards. You know, just like you can't have 36, 24, 36 up here, and she got on a mini skirt way up to here. And if that's all they got, they sit out there. If you want to sit out there, you can wear whatever you want to wear. But singing up on the praise team or ministry, you do have to present yourself in somewhat of a decent fact. That's what I mean by standards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, dead man walking, we done sent so many people to hell because they put on red lipstick. Mm -hmm. Saints, dead men walking, we are ambassadors. We are attorneys. We are attorneys. We are attorneys for Christ. Our job is to minister and to set people straight. Now, what do I mean by set people straight? Don't mean I need to come into your household and tell you everything that you're doing wrong. That's not setting you straight. That's judging. Mm -hmm. That's right. Setting somebody straight is when they're having a hard time and you got to pick them up by the hand. Come on, I love you. Let's go. That's what we got to do. We shouldn't take our salvation for granted. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Understand, it's a gift. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. At no point in your life should you ever take your salvation for granted. You should not take your salvation for granted. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Someone out there is on their way to be executed. Wow. Someone, my mother gave me a call today, and it's this lady that we know. She was 86 years old. And back home, they had a hurricane. And her children tried to get her to leave her house. And she didn't want to leave. Wow. And the hurricane got so bad that she wanted to leave. But when she tried to leave, she had a heart attack and died. Jesus. And all I could think was about this Bible class. And here's what I thought about. That's my mama. She's 86 years old. I'm not leaving her side. Or she's 86 years old. She can only fight for so long. Sometimes you have to force people to save their own lives. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for that family. I, I do. Because she was a nice woman. She was a God-fearing woman. I mean, she was a great person. She really was. I hate that she died. But I started thinking about that. That's your mother. You don't want to leave her. Yeah, she's honoring. Just pick her up and take her. She ain't going to fight too long. Because you know the danger. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know the danger. And so I'm saying that to us as saints of God is, you know the danger. You know the danger of someone else's lives. 
You know the danger of someone that is not saved. You know the dangers of those things. And so it's our job not to condemn them, but to love them. Amen. Love them. The Bible says he chastises those he loves. Yes. So sometimes love got to be a little stern. That's right. But people can tell the difference when you're helping them in love and you're helping them in yeah. condemnation. Yeah. You know, most of us as saints, we witness in condemnation. Yes. Why do you think pastors get up here and preach? Homosexuals are going to hell. Adulterers are going to hell. I'm not saying that they're not. But here's the point that I'm making. Do you know if you start preaching against one sin, you got to preach against them all? Go ahead on now, Pastor. I knew you were going to start telling the truth. Yeah, you, you have to. Same pastor up there sending all them people to hell. Can't even go home and love his wife and kids. Amen. Can't even do his taxes. Can't even pay. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Preachers and pastors is at an all divorce rate is at an all time high. But we can get up here and be stern about it. Saints, I'm telling you, take this whole word. Take this whole word. Let's go to point number two. Let's go to John chapter five. Mm -hmm. Let's go to John chapter five. Because saints, if we're going to win the world, if we're going to win the world, what do I mean by win the world? I don't mean the whole world. I just mean the people who you come in contact with. Yeah, they're not the ones we're concerned with. Mm -hmm. Do you really think you can affect President Obama? Do you really think you can pre uh, uh, affect Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton? No. They got some new guy they hyping up right now, Johnson. Can you really affect them? No. No. But you know who you can affect? Your neighbor, Johnson. That's right. Phil Trump. Mm -hmm. Hillary Johnson. That's your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You can affect them. Okay. So this is what we need to concentrate on. Affect the people who you can affect. If you want to get on Facebook and be a Facebook preacher and all that, that's great, but affect some real lives. Because that's who God coming back for. He ain't coming back for you got a thousand likes on your Facebook post. Or you got a hundred shares on your Instagram post. Yeah, he ain't coming back for that. He want to know how many people lives that you affected. Who lives did you affect? Because that's what it's about. He's coming back. How much did you obey the word that was laid out before you? John chapter 5 verse 24 reads as such. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from what? Death unto life he got a pardon dead man walking he got a pardon that's what our job is to get people pardons that's just another way of soul winning yeah that's all I'm saying to you dead man walking dead man walking meaning they're walking into the death chamber Depending on what time of life they're or uh, what time of uh, decade they're in, they depending on what uh, kind of death they get. You know, right now they give you lethal injection. We got people that overdose on drugs on a normal basis. Some people get the electric chair. We got people die in cars on a regular basis. Back in the old days, they used to use the firing squad. We got people getting shot on a regular basis. Every day, somebody is facing the death penalty. Our job is to introduce them so they can get their part, so that death sentence can be wiped away and they have eternal life in Christ. Yes. That's what our job is. That's what our goals are in life. So when you leave out of here tonight, when you leave out of here, just understand what your job is. Your job, you are a lawyer. And this Bible is your law book. Amen. If you don't study your law book, you will not be a good attorney. Right. And I'm telling you, 
this stuff is getting more and more complicated because people are getting more and more smarter. Saints, we got to know this. If you are not, a matter of fact, I think in order to become a lawyer, you got to take what they call the LSATs. So your LSATs, that gets you into law school. In order for you to become a certified lawyer, you got to pass the state bar exam. Here's your study book right here. This is your study book. And the only person that's grading your exam is Christ. Christ. Saints, there are people out there dying daily. There are saints out there dying daily. Notice I didn't say saved or unsaved. Because I don't know who's saved and I don't know who's unsaved. But what God did command us to do, he commanded us to live a holy life every day. So that your life can be the light that men see. That's what he commanded us to do. Amen. So whether someone is saved or unsaved is totally irrelevant to your life. I find it amazing when we get around saved people. We all want to talk and quote scriptures and Bible verses and, and all this other stuff. And then when you get other friends, you want to talk about the donka donks and all this other weird stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can't be going backwards and forwards like that. I'm not saying that when you're with your unsaved friends that you need to quote a thousand scriptures. I'm just saying be you. Be balanced. That's all I'm saying. Be balanced. There has to be a balance to this salvation. Because I'm telling you, just because you can quote a thousand scriptures don't make you any more holier. Someone who knows two scriptures and can live by them two scriptures is far more valuable than you quoting a thousand. Amen. Amen. We are lawyers for the Almighty Christ. Yes. Our, our job is to get people pardoned. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is Jesus. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. But it's passed from death unto life. That's the part. That's the part. You want to see somebody smile, let them know that, hey, you know what? I can't help you in your situation, but God can. And I guarantee you, it has been proven over and over and over again that people who give themselves to Christ, their life changes. Now, this is where they need you at. Because you can look at your own life. When their life changes, when they give their life to Christ, there is something else that takes place. And that's the enemy starts to get busy. So that's why they need you. Don't ever tell somebody that as soon as you give your life to Christ, your life is going to become easier. No. Don't ever tell nobody that. I'm not going to tell you it's going to get hard either. I'm just going to tell you, tell them, you're going to have to keep your salvation strong because the enemy is going to get busy. But that's what you're there for. You are there to help them along the way. You're not that one-time attorney. You know, you're not going to help them one time and go, no. Once you help them, guess what? They got a retainer with you. And that's what they call that, a retainer. So you got a retainer. So think about how many people lives you have affected. Those people have a retainer with you. Why? Because when they're going through, they need to be able to call you. Call you up. Sometimes it's going to be at 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it's going to be at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now let, let me put some, remember I told you everything got some restraints. So here's a couple of restraints out there. Because men flock to sisters. They do. I ain't going to tell you what their reasonings are, but they flock. It could be for good. It could be for bad. And God could be using you to uh, be that person's attorney. Mm -hmm. But don't have him calling you at no 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, now I'll refer him to another brother. Amen. Say, listen, hey, I'm sorry. I have helped you as far as I can help you, but I'm going to pass you off to the services of Brother and Brother Incorporation. 
Because you keep answering that phone at 4 o'clock in the morning, something else is going to take place. That's right. So if you married and they call you at four o'clock in the morning and you look at that number, pass it to the spouse. Right. Hey, this sister such and such. Now you gonna have to answer while sister such and such calling you at four o'clock in the morning. But for that moment, she's gonna take care of the problem. You got two problems, but she's gonna take care of the most important problem. Because that's just the way it is. That's right. You know, that's that's called respect. This is why as pastors, we have to teach how to do certain things. It's not a free for all in this salvation. Man, we need to set people up for all kinds of traps. You know, I'll give you an example. There's a brother that wanted to, to come to the church and do a couple of things. And I couldn't do it. I could have easily called my daughter and said, Jasmine, hey, go down to the church and help brother such and such. Oh, what I look like? I already don't like guys as is. And well, when it comes to my daughter, but the bigger picture of that, I could be setting herself up. Mm -hmm. If I do that enough, I can't get mad in another month or so, and they talking about they dating. No, oh no, I can't do that. Or well, let's take the worst case scenario, something happens to her. Mm -hmm. No, so this is why we gotta have wisdom mm -hmm. in a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. So this salvation is free. But the application of it is discipline. And so a lot of times we set ourselves up to fall. Just because you saved don't mean you can stand anything. That's right. If you got a problem with lust, then there are just some programs you shouldn't watch. That's, right. That's just the box. And I'm not going to even get off into porn. Porn is something that we'll talk about on a different date in a different class with because we got young people and all this other stuff in here. So we're not going to go there. But they're making some programs in today's society that if you got a problem with lust, it'll be in your best interest just not to watch it. If you got a problem with gambling, if you got a problem with lying, there are some places you shouldn't just go. You shouldn't put your salvation on display like that. Because I can promise you, you will fail. You might not fail that time, but you're going to fail at some point in time because you're going to get cocky with it. Amen. Since the salvation ain't nothing to play with, dead man walking. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Now let me give you something about sin. Deacon Hines, find this scripture for me, please. Where it says, I think it's in Hebrews. I could be wrong though. No. But it says, for him to know to do right and for him to do wrong, to him that's sin yes that's sin so find that scripture for me please so here's another scripture that I just thought of somebody else can find this scripture for me anything not of faith is sin please find that scripture for me and the reason I want y'all to find these scriptures because I don't want y'all Christians to get too comfortable because you know how we are we wait our salvations on Galatians chapter 5 where it got all them scriptures, you know, I, I'm, I don't do lasciviousness, I don't hate, I don't party, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't fornicate, I don't commit adultery, I don't spill, you know, we got that on lock. That's why I want them two scriptures found because the Bible says that anything not of faith is sin. For the wages of sin is what? It doesn't matter if you saved or not. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Why? Because we can all fall under that. For him to know to do right and him to not do it, for him to sin. John 8, 51. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now let me tell you why that scripture is so important. Because that's not talking about physical death. Why? Because the Bible says it's appointed to man to die once. Mm -hmm. It is appointed to man to die once. So what death is he talking about? He's talking about your soul. Everyone's soul is on trial. Everyone's soul is on trial. But we are the lawyers. Those of us that have been born again those of us 
that have been baptized in his name, filled with his person, we are the attorneys on record. And it is our job to make sure, to make sure that people get part. Saints, we gotta go live our lives. And one of the problems that we have is that we're not tough enough. We as saints aren't tough enough. Well, Pastor, what you mean we're not tough? I'm tough. I'm from the streets. Yeah, you might be from the streets. I'm from the country. Now what? We know how to fight. I know how to fight and run fast. Now what? Everybody from somewhere. I'll cut you, Pastor. And guess what? I'll cut you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, your credentials mean nothing. So let me show you what I mean by we're not tough and tough enough. Let us go to Romans chapter three. I mean Romans chapter six, verse three, four and five. Romans chapter six. And it reads as such. When you have it, say amen. It says Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Hold up. Let me stop. I'm going to say this. I ain't trying to offend nobody. But listen. I'm telling y'all now. You serve a God that is a good God. Mm -hmm. But you have a pastor that believes baptism is an essential part of salvation. Amen. You're going to have to show me some otherwise. I know a lot of people say it's not. A lot of people say hey, it's just a uh, ceremony. You know, or it's just a show of faith. I refuse to believe that because there's nothing in the Bible that tells me that. I can go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized mm -hmm. shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. That don't sound like no show of faith. That sounds like cut and dry to me. But even as we look at this, know ye not that so many of us that was baptized into Jesus Christ, we've got to get baptized. We were baptized into his what, though? When you get baptized, you get baptized into his what? His death. Now, I'm going to show you how we're not tough enough. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the what? Newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. This is why I say we're not tough enough. Because of that second scripture when it says that we shall also walk in the newness of life. Sometimes we fall. Sometimes we fall. Sometimes temptation just get to be too much. Sometimes we say, I just don't feel like praying and don't pray. Sometimes we feel, I don't feel like fasting and don't fast. Sometimes we, okay. Don't nobody raise their hand on this. But the phone rings. It's that sister, that brother got you on retainer. Ah. I'm busy right now and you don't answer the phone and then you hit the play button on your show. <laughs> don't raise your hand. Sometimes you just don't feel like being bothered. You know that's wrong. You know it's wrong when you're doing it. But you do it anyway. The point that I'm making to you is that when it talks about the walkness of the newness of life and anytime you hear me really talk about sinning, very rarely, I'm just saying rarely, I ain't going to say ever, but I say very rarely when you ever hear me just talk about physical sins. What is physical sins? You know, the, the cursing or the, the or, or sleeping around or the lying. Very rarely will you hear me because those things are menial. Those things are, if you're still struggling with those things, see, listen, hey, we can talk about that. But I don't want to talk about those things because I can't name all of them. But I'm going to tell you what I like talking about more than that. I like talking about those spiritual sins. Why? Because you can't escape those. Because you know how most Christians are. We all stuck up in sedity. You know, we, we wear Christianity like it's a badge of honor. 
I'm the only saved person in my in my work section. How do you know? Because they be cursing and they be talking about the parties they went to. I'm the only one that's. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to say you're not. But by that same measure, you're the only saved person in there. Cursing under your breath. Right. Really? Talking about people behind their back. I ain't cheating on my spouse, but I'm sure thinking about what I can do to sister and brother, sister and such. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Church supposed to be fast and you just eat donuts. <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to, you know, yeah, you get a 30 minute to an hour lunch break. Yeah, you, you, that's time to read your word or to study your Sunday school lesson. You on the internet looking at gossip and 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 e true Hollywood and, and catching up with the Kardashians and you're doing all of that stuff but what you're supposed to do. I'm the only saved person in my work center because guess what? If you was the only truly saved person in your work section, guess what? You will be out and about amongst the people. You will be out and about amongst the people. You will be talking to your co-workers. You would have a relationship with your co-workers. And then when something go wrong, guess what? They'll be able to call you up and say, hey, I just need you to pray for me. Yes. If you truly say that is. But you know, most of us, I'm, not, I'm, gonna, look, I'm going to shun the very appearance of evil. <laughs> Don't look in the mirror. <laughs> I'm just saying. Man, we, we, we have a way of, of making ourselves higher than what we really are. Because the Bible says that Jesus was of lowly estate. And what that truly means of him being of lowly estate, he knew he was the king. But he still had the ability to talk to the poor people. He had the ability to talk to the publicans. He had the ability to talk to the scribes. He had the ability to talk to the Jews. He had the ability to talk to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He even had the ability to talk to the king. And here it is, y'all can't even speak correct English. I'm saved. I'm saved. Lord, use me. However it is you want to use me. You can't even conjugate a subject and a verb. So the only people you're going to be talking to is this group of people right here. And you know what? If that is your story, you got some growing to do. Because when God saved you, he saved you with the ability to talk to people of higher state and lower state. He gave you the ability to talk to the blacks, the whites. The Hispanics, yes, the Asians, yes, the Filipinos. Yes, yes. That's what he gave you. Them. Man, my daughters pick at me all the time. Daddy, you don't know all them languages. You just know words. You just That's all I need to know. Uh -huh. I ain't never said I was proficient multilingual. I'm just saying I know multilinguages. I know enough to let you know what I need you to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I need to know. Amen. Yeah. They be like, well, dad, just blah, blah, blah. But oh, they getting a rude awakening in Spanish class now. Because that teacher just talking to them in Spanish. And all that broken Spanish they thought they knew, <laughs> oh, they suffer. I say, see, that's what you get. I'll stick with my Spanish. Here's the point. You got to learn how to better yourself. Since you got to better yourself. You got to educate yourself. Yes. Yes, this is one form of education. This is the best education. Some of the worst things that we do as preachers is when we say stuff like, I don't need to go to seminary school. All I need is this. All you've just done is limit who you can go talk to. Yes, I've been to seminary school. It didn't teach me how to preach. It didn't teach me pretty. The only thing it really taught me is what they know. That's what seminary taught me, what they know. I had to learn certain things. I had to learn the antediluvian age. I had to learn pre and post and mid-trib. I had to learn all that stuff. Why? 
Is it useful? Yeah, it's useful when I talk to other people. All that has done, though, it has opened my ability to talk to other people. Because I'm telling you now, saints, there are some places you're not going to be able to go if you don't have a degree. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you think you got. I don't care how saved you are. There are some places you're not going to go unless you got a degree. And if you have the mindset, I am happy where I am at and I don't want no other degree, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I'm going to tell you you have limited yourself. That's all I can say. And if you're comfortable in that situation, am I your judge? Yeah, I'm not your judge. I'm just the lawyer. That's all I'm doing. I'm just a lawyer trying to tell you the best way to win your case. That's it. Saints, we got to learn. Man, 10 minutes, Bible class went by. Well, I'm just going to stay in Romans then. And we'll pick it up next week. But here's the second most important thing. A third most important thing. Romans 6 and 5. It says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Here's why I want to put that so important to you. The Bible says that we have been planted together. We have been planted together. This salvation is not for you to be saved all by yourself. Let me tell you something that has hurt saints and people alike. If you have ever said this, or if you've ever heard someone say this, or if you said it and don't want to admit it, I'm telling you, you better change your mindset. And here's the phrase, this is me. This is how I am. That's one of the worst statements you can ever make because what that says is how you are is more important than how someone else is. No, saints, it doesn't work that way. Well, you know, uh, Sister Pamela, you know, uh, uh, you shouldn't be mad at me because that's just the way I am. You know, I really didn't mean to. No, that don't even work in your own marriage. Yeah, my goal is not to tell you how I am. The goal is for me to figure out how you are and to figure out your language so I can speak to you in that way. That's our job as a Christian. For marriages, they even wrote a book about it called The Five Love Languages. Yeah, we spend, yeah, people who say stuff like that get caught up in themselves. Not one time did you ever hear Jesus say, this is how I am. Every time you hear Jesus speak, he was speaking to their intellect. That's why sometimes they couldn't answer. Because he spoke to them. Our job as a Christian is to learn people. Because how you are is going to come automatically. That's why that's the worst thing you can say. Well, that's just how I am. That's just how I am. That's just how I am. You need to learn me. No. I'm only going to learn you as you learn me. That's called reciprocation. Mm -hmm. That's how relationships work. No relationships work one-sided. Relationships only work when mutual feelings have been reciprocated. And sometimes for those of us that are married and we've been married longer than two days, you find out one thing and this is what you find out. Sometimes you got to toe that line all by yourself until that spouse come around. I can't promise you that they ever will. Yeah, I can't promise you that. But what I can tell you is that's what it's about. Because it's that same relationship that Christ has with us. So saints, your salvation is important. And when you win souls, and here's the important thing, when you win souls, win souls from a defense attorney standpoint and not the prosecutor. We're all defense attorneys. 
It's our job to get them off. That's what our job is. We call it winning souls, yes, but I just want to give it to you in a dead man walking. And it doesn't matter if you saved or unsaved. That is totally irrelevant. Why? Because we all need help. Why? Because it said it right there. For we have been planted together. That's you and I in the likeness of his death. You and I, we are together. We are planted together. And that's how we go out and we win souls. That's how we go out and we witness. We witness in love, not in condemnation. So you don't go up to somebody, oh, you know what you did is wrong. And they already know they're wrong. Okay, and? Yeah, it's many ways to tell somebody, like, you know what, listen. I know what you're doing and I don't even hold it again. I just don't do that. So just, we can get together when you finish. See how that works? If they value the friendship, they'll be like, okay. Or sometimes they'll be like, you know what? I didn't really want to do that anyway. Let's go do something we both like. That's right. You don't have to condemn people to change people. Sometimes you can just be yourself and do it in love. Flam, 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 flam. Listen, I need you to stop cursing because I'm a Christian and that offends me. Okay. Flam, 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 flam. <laughs> no. If you got the true holiness on the inside of you, that'll shut that down. That'll shut that down. Because the difference is when the spirit shut it down, you automatically gain respect in the spirit people know who's around people know your spirit and you don't have to change for nobody you can still be yourself and still stay in your environment but you know what somewhere down the line we done lied to people and we done told them we need 19 bibles on our desk we need six jesus freak t-shirts and every day i'm gonna wear a different one and every day when i say prayer it's going to be 45 minutes, the whole lunch break, and everybody going to hear me praying. That don't make you saved. I ain't saying you're not. I'm just saying it don't make you saved. What makes you saved is the life that you live. Did you take care of these little ones that God gave before you? Did you love them the way he would love them? Did you approach them the way? And quit approaching people thinking they're going to change right then and there. There were very few people change right then and there. The Bible says one planet, one, one watereth, God. but who gets the increase? God gives the increase? That's all we're supposed to do is plant seeds right. as a lawyer. They might not want your services today. Here, just take my card, call me when you need me. That's all you do. Here, call me when you need me. And you'll be surprised a year from now, two years from now. You know what? That sister right there just showed me love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, thank you. Since that's what we're supposed to do. Dead man walking. Since there are people out there that need us. And they need us to be loving. Especially with this world in an uproar the way it is where people are searching for sexual identity. Where there's an uproar tension between uh, law enforcement and citizens. Uh, blacks and whites, Hispanics and Asians. The uproar, Democrats and Republicans. This world is in an uproar right now. And what they need from us, they need for us, the true saints of God, to stand up and show them this is how you be saved in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storm. Because it's a storm. But guess where we are at? We're in what they call the eye. That's the safest place to be in a hurricane or a tornado. In the eye of the storm. And that's where we're at. Why? Because we know the man who controls the storm. We serve the man who can calm the sea. That's where we are. And you might not be able to reach the whole world. But God ain't asking you to reach the whole world. He's just asking you to reach one person at a time. That's all you're responsible for. One person at a time. Amen.